How to stop a running toilet, guaranteed. Is your toilet running? You better go catch it. We get asked questions every day about how to stop a running toilet. And I've got my favorite trainer. We've got the back cut out of this. If you look down in your bowl and that water's moving, that means water is getting from the tank down into the bowl. I'm gonna spin this thing around. I'm gonna show you some parts inside that are probably gonna be what you need to do to fix it. Over here, you've got your angle stop, which supplies water to the toilet. You're gonna wanna put a little towel down, maybe a rag, anything at all to catch any water. Because when you take your supply line off, you're gonna have water there. Now, one thing too, I tell people at this point, make sure you know how to turn the water off to your house because what if this angle stop breaks? What if the supply line breaks and it didn't shut off? You need to know how to turn that water off so you don't have a problem that could cost you a lot of money. Once you turn your angle stop off, flush your toilet. What you're trying to do, you're trying to get all the water out of the tank into the bowl and let it go down the drain. Because here in a minute, you're actually gonna get all the water out of the tank. Now, let's spin this thing around. All right, so now we've got it turned around. So let's open this thing up. So I wanna cover the parts of the toilet with you. First of all, there's your handle. That's what flushes it. Now, we remove the lid, you know what that is. This is your tank, this is your bowl. But the inside parts, this is actually the fill valve, meaning there's a valve here that turns the water off and on inside your tank. It's what lets it fill up. This is part of your flush valve. This is your overflow tube. Now this one is cut pretty low, but it's a high efficiency toilet. It does not take a lot of water to flush it. And this piece, of course, is one we hear about all the time. This is your flapper. And then going to your flapper from the handle, you've got your chain. So the way a toilet works is it fills up with water. The valve comes up, shuts the water off until you flush it. And when you pull this up, the air inside the flapper hold it up until the water level comes down. And as the water level comes down, this valve comes down, this float assembly comes down and opens up the valve inside to let the water start flowing. Now, this tube here goes into your overflow. This helps keep everything down here full. It helps keep your trap full. Now remember, after you flush the toilet, you wanna get a wet vac. You wanna get some big sponges. You wanna get some towels in here and you wanna sop up as much water as you can. You wanna get it out of here because that way whenever we get ready to move this, you don't wanna have any water in the bottom of your tank. So get all the water out first. Now remember, you shut off the valve. Now you've got the water out of it. Now it's easy to work on this and not make any mess at all. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the fill valve. So you just loosen up this nut now, hold on to it up here, take your overflow tube apart. You're gonna loosen this up undo it and slide it right out. Now, I'm gonna show you a trick right here because this is something you may be able to do without ever even having to remove this. If you'll disconnect the screw and the float here from your fill valve, pop this cover off. Now, you have the little lever here, the assembly I was telling you about. Turn this just a little bit and pull it up. So what it does is it disconnects. See this black washer in here? You wanna look down in here, is there any trash? If there's anything in here that you can grab with a pair of tweezers, anything that you can do to clean this thing up. A lot of times, just changing this little diaphragm washer will fix the problem. If you look at it, you've got a little hole there in the middle. Just look at this thing really good. See if there's any trash in there. Believe it or not, a lot of times there is a lot of trash in our water. Clean it up, put it back together, turn it the same way that it was, and you're set to go. So that literally right there, just like it came out, pull it out, now you're good to go. Now, put your cover back on, do everything right. But say you're changing it out. Say you went ahead, you called the manufacturer, they're gonna send you a new one, you're gonna go ahead and change it out. What if it's a little longer or shorter? Well, the cool thing about these is, you move that little plastic piece right here, you can change the height of these. Now, that's good to know, because when you take out the old one and put the new one in, Put them side by side, make sure they're set at the same height. Then slide your piece of plastic back down and lock it down. Now, that is an easy way to change your fill valve. A lot of times your fill valve can be the problem, but what if it's not your fill valve? Well, then you have two other things to look at. The first one, of course, is the flapper. But when you're working on the flapper, when you reach in and remove it, 
But one thing you wanna do is you wanna fill the edge that this sets up. A lot of times, if you've let it leak for a long time, there may be a little groove, a little nick, anything like that in here. I've seen it plenty of times. At that point, well, you're gonna have to change the flush valve. That's a little bit longer. That's a whole nother video. But if you have a nick here, you know you have to replace it. Now, all you're gonna do is take off these two bolts here, pull it up, and then there's a big nut holding this onto the tank. It's not very hard to do, but it does take a little bit more time in today. I just wanna show you the basics, how to get in here and fix it. We will put a link in here to how to change out the flush valve. That way, if you do feel this and have a nick and you know that's something you gotta do, I wanna make sure you get everything you need. Okay, so to change the flapper, you just disconnect it from the handle. It's not real hard to do. Now, this is a two inch flapper for a two inch opening. Make sure you get the right one. There are different sizes, there are different types. There are some that have floats built in. One thing that I'll recommend, just like I did on the fill valve, if you're changing this out, go ahead and look at your adjustment right now. How long is your chain? It's a lot easier to adjust here than it is down inside the tank trying to get your hook right. Don't get me wrong, you can do it. I've done it for years, but this is something you can do. Also, what type do you have? Does it clip on like this or does it have a round ring that slides over the overflow tube? They make both type. Just make sure that you're getting the right kind. Now, if you'll look inside the lid or the tank, you can probably get your model number off of it, get the brand name off of it. You can always look right down in front of the tank on the bowl. Normally the manufacturer puts their brand name there. They want you to know what type toilet you have. Now, there are universal parts that you can go to the big box stores and get. If it's running right now and you wanna fix it quick, you may pull the flapper out, carry it down, try to replace it. Just ask them, do you have one that will work like this? Plumbers have been using universal replacement parts for years, so trust me, you can too. Now, when you go to put it back together, if it's clip on top, just line it up and push it down. See how easy that was? Then, get the other end of it, hook it back in your handle right where it was. Now, you want just a little bit of slack right there. You don't wanna put it so tight that it holds it up and maybe doesn't let it set down on the bottom of the flush valve. This has to set and seal because that is what keeps the water up here. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and show you how to change the handle too. Now, this normally will not lead to it running, but if you've got the old brass top and somebody's hit it and flushed it and jacked with it too hard, or maybe they reached inside and pulled something up and bent it, it can put a little tension on it. Another thing, Sometimes this chain can jump up and get hooked on your hook. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what happens. So just look at everything first. See if you have anything keeping the flapper from coming all the way down. On this one, if you're replacing this, make sure you get your little washer down on the bottom, push it all the way up, make sure everything moves around real good. You're gonna take that washer and make sure it goes down in the hole like it's supposed to. At that point, you take your nut, tighten it up there, and put your hose back into your overflow. Now, one other thing is, say you got your float off and it's not adjusted right. You wanna adjust your water level where it's somewhere between half inch to an inch from the top. That way, when it comes up, it doesn't come up to the very top and overflow. Sometimes it'll do that, it'll stick. Once your valve starts getting a little corroded on the inside, things like that, it doesn't move as smooth, it'll get up there and maybe let it keep going. So adjust it to where it's a half inch to an inch below here. And I like to just kind of line it up right here. Take the center of my float, know where I want it to go. Say that it shut off right there, way down here. Well, if I want to raise this float, I can screw this in. So righty tighty is going in. What I'm doing is I'm screwing it and my float's coming up. Well, to be honest, that would probably shut it off right there at the very top. These are simple things that are really very easy to do and the only thing I really used was a pair of channel locks to loosen and then tighten the fill valve. Then when you're done, hook your water supply line back up and slowly turn the water on. One thing I like to do is pick this up, that way the water doesn't come in here. Now I can check my connection here and see if it leaks. Then let it down. Now I can slowly watch it come up, everything come together, look around your nut, see if you have any leaks here. Once it comes up and it stops, somewhere between half inch and an inch, Flush it. Make sure it flushes like it's supposed to and, it, and you've got a good strong flush. That's what it's all about. Now, when you're all said and done, put the tank lid on. But I will tell you this because I've seen it more than once. 
when you take this tank lid off, set it somewhere where it's not just on top of the counter, where you're liable to get up and move around and hit it and watch it break on the floor. And like I said about getting the parts and numbers you need, here's the numbers to all the different repair parts list. It tells you the tank number, it tells you everything you need to find what you need. Put it back on, flush it one more time. All you're feeling for now is to make sure the handle's not coming all the way up. I hope this taught you everything you need to know about how to stop a running toilet. And if you've got another type toilet that has the cylinder flush, we've actually made an entire other video just for that. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.